I would say silver right now, and I know it's something like a broken record, is probably the best place you can put your money for the next decade. Well, a lot of volatility, mostly pressure to the upside. We have had some sell-offs, profit-taking, whatever you want to call it. I think there's more upside. I just did a uh, update for um, you know members, free members actually, for the free newsletter, free e-letter. And I think we've got a couple dollars to the upside. Uh, I think we'll hit some resistance at around 28. But now these forecasts are the best you can do. And there's so many variables that, you know, something really big happened, you know, some event, some false flag, whatever. I mean, all that technical work means nothing. So I'll say that. Uh, the other part, of course, is what we're going to bring up. And I think oil is something we need to talk about. As far as gold, gold's doing its job. Gold is leading. Gold is more establishment, as I've said many times. Many people, when the risk is on and they want to hedge the risk, they go to gold. They don't think about silver. Uh, it's gold, gold, gold. And that's fine. In fact, uh, you know, that's where most of the money is. I mean, there's, you know, if you're counting in fiat, and gold market dwarfs the silver market. Nonetheless, some of that angst will spill over in the silver market at some point. I think it's already starting, and I do think it will continue, as I just said, but I do think we'll hit a plateau at some point, depending on this Ukraine situation. If things start to calm down, it looks like there could be some negotiations and things are kind of put to bed, so to speak, then we might see, uh, I would expect to see a pull off in the metals prices. I think it's both. I mean, that's been a cop out. I think it's news. And I also think that uh, fundamental facts around the uh, metals markets have come into question. I know that's the next topic we're going to discuss, but what's happened in the nickel market with the LME and, you know, what really takes place there is pretty interesting. And I certainly have some thoughts on that. Yeah, well, it was a short, classic short squeeze. Uh, somebody, I believe, from Chinese descent was short and got caught as the market went up and of course probably couldn't make the margin call so it'll probably be some banks backing them up or backing up the entity uh it reminds me what happened to palladium palladium did something very similar years ago probably more than 10 and at the top of the market to hold a futures contract you had to pay two times the price of the physical commodity so i think palladium peaked out around a thousand so if you want to stay in the paper market you had to put up two thousand uh, dollars times the 100 ounce contract. So 200 grand to have one contract on paper or 100 grand to buy one, uh, to have a, a contract fulfillment and others buy it off the spot market or the physical market. Mm -hmm. So this has been done before. And what happened there was unfortunately, in my opinion, was that the LME basically uh, had it, had it in their vaults and they were the ones that allocated it out the way they wanted it to be allocated out. So, you know, so when you own it or you own the contract or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean, read the contract carefully, that you're going to be able to move it or take it or do what you want with it. Now, I'm not saying that's across the board, read the contract. I do know what happened to so Coming back to nickel, I think you see a similar thing. Uh, the powers that be will do everything in their ability to keep control of the market doing almost anything you can imagine. It's already happened, you know, my age, I mean, it happened in the hunt days. You could only sell, you couldn't buy. And of course that took care of the market that really stopped the, the silver market. So yes, they could do it again. And in fact, uh, I digress for a minute here, but uh, Phillips Baker, when he became CEO of Hecla, had a great gathering of uh, silver people uh, here in Spokane, and he brought in the CFTC, the Silver Users Association, the CME, uh, a couple of mining companies, myself, Jeff Christian, a lot of people. And uh, during this day's discussion, everybody got a chance to speak in panels and that type of thing. I asked the CFTC guy about, you know, changing the rules, and he was very adamant they didn't change the rules. They did what they were entitled to do. Of course, if you talk to people from the hunt camp, which I have, I know Bunky's long gone, but people that are still alive that I know on a first name basis and have meals with, will tell you the change. So I'll leave it at that. You know, these things could go away. I mean, I've made the uh, comment many times that, you know, there used to be a milk, milk futures market and an egg futures market, and both those are long, long gone. We still have milk and eggs and it's a cash market. And there are ways to hedge without a futures uh, market. It's harder, but it can be done. And so 
I think it would be a much more fair market across the sector. I mean, the entire commodity sector, not just the metals markets, the coke, the foods, the stuff, the softs, everything. If we had a more honest market where the true side of supply demand fundamentals would dictate the price rather than how much paper can be produced, that the derivative of those given commodities. So will it happen? I think it could. Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? I think it's likely now watching what happened in nickel, knowing what happened. I think it was last year, early in January, where a couple of the big silver ETFs actually changed their perspectives and said, you know, we basically they admitted they were getting very tight on the physical silver supply and they had to alter the perspectives. And my shout out to uh, Ronan Manley, uh, the bullion star for bringing that to everyone's attention. He does uh, some very good uh, deep looks into what's really going on. I'm going to be very conservative here and probably get some people upset, but I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to be as honest as I can. I would say silver right now, and I know this sounds like a broken record, is probably the best place you can put your money for the next decade. The reason I say decade is, you know, I'm old enough where, you know, what, you hear 10 years from now, I don't know, to be determined. The point is, if you're, you know, 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50, the demand side of silver on the industry is so huge that it will corner the market almost by itself. In other words, palladium is 100% industrial. Yeah, I bought palladium, I've sold it. The investment demand on palladium is almost nil, whereas the investment demand on silver was greater than industrial demand in 2020. So that's the dynamic that's different between the two metals. So you bear that in mind, and then you think of silver moving to where palladium is, meaning that the industrial side only is going to take up the whole thing. And I'm not saying it will. I'm saying it's moving that direction from 50% of the market, probably 80 or 85% of the market in the next decade. I think you can see the picture that the price has got to change. And I like what you said. You know, I mean, silver, let's say silver peaks at, and, you know, the numbers are so crazy in silver. So I'll just use my number. I wrote in 2003, 100 bucks. So silver gets 100. And then there's balance or equilibrium in the market, which I doubt, but let's say just as an example. And then it cools off. Uh, let's say it goes to 150 and it cools off to 100. It's 100 stable there for a while, like a year or something. And then as the as the natural squeeze continues with industrial demand and some investment demand continuing, then you will just see it, you know, repriced just like palladium. I mean, palladium, you know, threefold what it was at the all time high, whatever, 10 years ago. Silver, I think, would absolutely do something similar to that. I don't see silver getting to an area and maintaining a price. I hope it does, but it's not likely. Silver has a history from day one of uh, spiking when it's in a market condition, when it's not used as money. So I do expect to see silver overshoot, um, you know, what the market will bear. But it's there's a lot of things that are unknown right now 